Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. No, 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So this letting, that's not a wise spirit to have. You boasting yourself. You're talking about what you all the things that you're able to do and this, that, and that. No, you, you're boasting yourself. Everything you got and everything, every gift you got, the eloquency of words, all of that you got is because the Most High put a spirit on you to be able to produce and build the kingdom, build this nation. But if you, if you, if you get high-minded to think that, hey, I, I got this wisdom because I, I, got, I, went, I went and got me a doctorate. I went to college for 12 years. You did this, that, and the third. The only way you was able to do it is because the Most High gave you breath in your body and allowed you to be able to do it. He gave your brain the power to retain the information. And we are, we always have to keep that in our mind because otherwise we will go off and we will find ourselves doing things that go completely. We will find ourselves doing things as simple as breaking the Sabbath because we 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 seeking after. Um, worldly accolades whether it's school whatever it, whatever the case may be school trying to get a certain position in a job whatever you'll find yourself breaking the simplest laws because you're 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 hell bent on having status being able to be in the forefront and that's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in that's not a charitable spirit that's not charity. That's not, that's you vaunting yourself. That's you boasting your boasting about yourself. Uh, read that. Read on. Verse thirteen. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. So we gonna. But it, what Paul is saying, he said, we're not gonna boast beyond the things that the Most High put in our power. We we not going there. Because we know we understand that the most high could just like, just as quick as he gave it to us, he could take it away from us. Read on. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. Uh huh. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Uh huh. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly uh -huh. to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Uh -huh. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. This is the point. This is the, the point. Anything that we glory in, we glory. We supposed to glory in the most high God because none of us deserve to be here. I don't care if you came in, came in the truth at 16, 25, 35, 45, you was in the midst of some wickedness and some evil, and you don't deserve to be here. Hell, if not in this life, the life before, you was in some form of evil where you the, the most you don't deserve the mercy. So you when you glory, you glory in the Lord. You glory in the thing that the Lord, the 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 opportunities. And hell, the opportunity to just even be, to, to have an understanding that you are an Israelite and that you got to keep his commandments. We glory in the Lord. Read. Verse 18. For not he that commendeth himself is approved. It says, for not he that commendeth himself is approved. Read. 
but whom the Lord commended. But whom the Lord commended. Is that what I thought our our uh, opinions and thoughts and philosophies don't mean nothing. It's what the Most High God commends. It was the Most High God put in our spirit. What the Most High God put in our people's spirit. We ain't nothing, and we got to keep that in our mind. Because when you get in that spirit, that's a prideful spirit. You boasting yourself, trying to put your works on display. No, you doing things just so you can say, "Hey, look at my look at my track record. I got I got twenty five offices that I'm that I'm that I'm in. Look at this. What you got? You 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 being boastful." That's not a charitable spirit. You're not considering your brother because everybody, you, hey, you might have 25 or 30 offers, you, all these things that you're doing, but the most high put that spirit in you to be able to do that for why? So you can to multiply your talents, so you can build up other men. You can build up other sisters to be able to do those things as well, not throw it in people's face. Hey, I got 25. What you got? Oh, two? You ain't, you ain't on my level. Holler at me when you get on my level. That's the wrong spirit. That's you boasting yourself. And you know, and I'm saying these words as examples. A lot of times you don't even have to say it. Like the scripture say in Sirach 19 and 29, your actions so that's your mindset. Because you walk the way you walk around with your head above the heels, like you're above everybody. That's not a charitable spirit. You're you're boasting. You're you you have a prideful, heavy, prideful spirit. And it's only a matter of time before the Most High take that spirit away from you and cause you to fall. Uh, where am I at? You might have to add something also. Go ahead. Can I get uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15? The book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. So what's heavy, it's very heavy that you're going over this, and I'm very glad that you're going over this because I'm learning myself. But um, read this, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. Read this. Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. So the scripture says that some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and of strife, meaning what? It's not sincere. That's a person that's vainglorious. That's a person that's boastful, that, that's full of pride. So they teach out of envy, supposing of some type of superiority, superiority over others that suppose it's not real there, like the, de the definition you brought. So it says, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and of strife, meaning it's really out of competition. Come on. And some also of goodwill. Ain't that the definition that you pulled of long-suffering? It's or kind, it's goodwill. There's a different mindset, a different spirit behind it. That's the spirit of charity that Christ is looking for in all of us. Read on. The one preach Christ of contention. Uh-huh. Not sincerely. Not what? Not sincerely. Or not with charity. Not sincerely. Come on. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Jump to chapter 2 and verse 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Uh-huh. Having the same love. Having the same what? Having the same love. Which is also charity. Having the same love. Come on. Being of one accord, uh -huh. of one mind. Of one mind. Again, going back to that spirit, that spirit of charity. It's a mindset. Read on. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Because charity vaunteth not itself. Charity is not boastful. So it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Going back to that thin line between hatred and love. Meaning you can do preach Christ and be doing the works out of love, out of sincerely, because you actually care, because you actually have genuine charity towards your neighbor or love for your people. Or are you doing it for your own personal gain, your own personal pride and self-esteem? Read on. But in lowliness of mind. But in what? Lowliness of mind. You have to be humble, humility. So really, charity is coupled with the spirit of humility. It's impossible, it's impossible to be charitable if you're not humble because charity vaunteth not itself. A person that vaunteth or boasteth itself cannot dwell in a spirit of humility. And so you can't be humble and have charity at the same time. It's impossible. Read on. Let each esteem other better than themselves. This is an action. Somebody that's going to be esteeming others better than themselves. Saul wanted the ladies to esteem him better than they esteemed David. So he wasn't charitable. 
He was that it was in the spirit, and he was envious. He was, a, he was in the spirit to vaunt himself. He wanted to be that HNIC. But we have to make sure that we are conscious and aware and self-examining our spirits on how we move, especially when it comes to preaching Christ. Because we know there's spirits like that when you examine different camps, but even here in our congregation, you, some of us deal with these spirits as well. So we got to be mindful for that. All praises. Uh, go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 10. Uh, read that. Luke chapter 18 and verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank and then, thee. And then look at the words. Read that again. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. It says the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with with himself. He wasn't even praying to the most high God. He wasn't even praying to the most high. He went there. It says two men went up into the temple to pray. When you pray, you're supposed to be praying to God. It says the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. That lets you know off back right there his mind wasn't right. Read. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. You see that? He thought of himself more highly than he ought to think. He boasted in his accomplishments. And then, on top of it, he points out, like, hey, I ain't like him. He evil. He wicked. He a sinner. He right next to him. Right. That's vaunt, that's you both, that's a person that vaunteth they self. You think because you got certain gifts and talents and then you're able to do certain things that you better than your brother and sister. No, you're not. You're not. Everybody was given a measure of faith. We all we all play an important when you look at um First Corinthians twelve, where it says the the what did it say the most the um the uncomely parts. Yeah. Have to more, need. more honor. Right. It said they are to be more honored. But yet you got this and this and this it's brothers and sisters that got this type of spirit. Whether they came in, like, you know what I'm saying? We a lot of a lot of I think I said this before, but a lot of throughout when you go throughout the the the, the nation with the, the different congregations, a lot of the young men, a lot of the, the leaders are young men. And you have older brothers and sisters that come in after you and then they man oh I got life I ain't talking to this this young boy you gonna get counsel from this young boy <laughs> what you gonna get counsel why, why get counsel from him he, he, he still wet behind the ears he on it but yet okay this brother been laboring for in the truth keeping the commandments for eight ten years and actually sincerely been doing it, getting things together, and you just came in a year ago? Yeah, so it's good. You know what I'm saying? You have life experience. You got life experience that can be beneficial to building the nation. Yes. But you're one year old in the spirit, and that brother, that that brother that may be over, the, or that senior sister that been there longer than you, they've been laboring Longer than you, sir, so they're older than you. But a lot of times, this the spirit that, I, that the older brothers and sisters come in with. And not all of them, not all. It's not all of them, but some, you have a select few across the nation in, in the congregations that come in and they think because they, they 50, 60 and they don't they done had some life experience, they don't, they retire, whatever, they feel like they are better than those that are younger than them but been in the truth longer. No, that's not how the most, if, if that was the case, the most high would have brought you in first. But he didn't bring you in first because you know your spirit wasn't right. He brought in a younger, humble brother or sister that was going to get their mind right and be able to move accordingly and brought you in after because he knew that you was going to need them versus them needing you. And we we all have all have that. And then, you know, I ain't going to say it ain't, it ain't no this. It is a this. But it, we all got to have that mindset. It don't matter the, 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 the age and accolades, your accomplishments, all of that stuff. 
Yes, it's useful to build a nation, but you got to understand spiritually, spiritually it ain't useful. But for us to continue to move in this world, yeah, the things the the you got experiences, you got you got um certain job experiences and things like that. Yes, it could be used and it will be used to build the nation. But it's spiritually you have to sit back and learn. You got to relearn everything. What I was going to say, officer, is what a lot of people don't realize is that they'll have that experience, that years of experience in uh, exercising worldly wisdom and handling matters in a worldly way, but it wasn't based on the foundation and the wisdom how God tells us to handle matters. Because there are ways that God tells us to handle matters that you sh we should not, that we typically handle or see happen in the world. Because this book is the doctrine of life. So this, the, all the issues of life is written here, but you have this young man that's been exercised in it for the past 10 years, and you're just now finding out. And that's what people don't realize. They, they look at their age and all the stuff that they've been through and have accumulated as a, a measurement of more experience or wisdom versus to the age of experience that God gives us through his word, through his counsels. Because that's what this book is. This is God's counsel that younger men have been, or in most cases, younger men have been more exercised in than what aged men have. That's it. Right. Uh, finish that. Verse 12. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So this, this sort of public, and you see, he had a whole different thought. He was humble. This was a meek spirit. This was a spirit that God, that the Most High God could work with because he understood, I ain't ish. I ain't nothing. And a, a public, and what, that's a tax collector. He, it ain't, he, he wasn't coming like he ain't had no money. Like he didn't have things, his stuff together, but he understood Hey, I'm a sinner. I done wronged people. I done cheated on the tax. I done did all this. Hey, I'm a sinner. Help me. Help me get right. I know my man ain't right. That's the spirit that the most I can move with. Because then your brother come and correct you. You're going to be like, damn, you know what? You right. You know what? That was off. You know what? I'm going I'm to fix that. And you're going to fix it and move forward. But a brother that's prideful, like the, like the Pharisee we read here, hey, man, you know you know you, you did X, Y, Z wrong. I ain't do nothing wrong. What you mean? Who, you, who are you to tell me? I'm a, hey, I, I know the law. That's the same. That's that Christianity spirit. That's not how we're supposed to move. Read. Verse 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So we have to make sure we're on the right side of that equation. It's, we supposed to humble because we just examine our forefathers. When Moses was called, Moses was like, "Who me? Like I, I'm? A, I, I, what do you say? I'm a? Uh, what's the word? What's the verbs that he used? He said. Uh, he said, "I don't even know Hebrew. I don't even know the language. Right? He, he asked him to find somebody else. He, he made excuses because he didn't. He didn't. He was humble. That's a humble spirit. Like I, you want me to do that?" Like, nah, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I'm I don't think I'm fully equipped. Jeremiah. I'm a child, huh? I'm a child. And he and the, the most I had to uh encourage them, so to say. Put put hey, don't worry about it. I got you. That's a humble spirit. But somebody with hey, I deserve to be in this man, I when I, I did this, that, there, I deserve to be right here. You in the wrong spirit because the most high take you, move you out the way quick. That's the wrong spirit to have. Go back to first, first first Corinthians 13 and 4. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. So charity is not puffed up, which is similar. It's the same, kind of the same as vaunteth not, but puffed up. Like vaunted not is more so you actually verbally boasting you 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 talking about what you got and what you do and all of that puffed up is you just you you just your 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 aura you just your spirit just you just walk around like 
you just got an arrogant spirit. You walk around like you better than everybody. You don't really, you, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It's the same thing, but it's the, it's the actions that follow. It's the actions that follow. The way you carry yourself is a little bit different with, with a puffed up spirit. Uh, pull up that definition. You got to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say it's like um, like what the scripture say in Psalms 83 where it talks they lift up the head. It's that proud look. They lift it up the head. It's the way you move, the way you carry yourself, that that proudness. Right. Uh, so pull that definition up. Outline of biblical usage. To make natural... To make natural, to cause a thing to pass into nature. Two, to inflate, blow up, to cause to swell up. Uh, to puff up, make proud. To be puffed up, to bear oneself loftily, be proud. What's well, the, the saying? Um, you big, you got a big head, I'm big headed. That's what puffed up is. You walk around like can't nobody tell you nothing. That's a diff That's what. That's where the difference is at. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You know it all. You got all the answers. If somebody corrects you, they wrong. You just puffed up. You think you can't be touched. Um, get 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed, lest he fall. It said, if you think you stand, if you think you can't be touched, examine yourself because you're on your way to fall. Another scripture say pride, uh, pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If you're walking around like you can't be touched, like you can't be touched, like you, oh, man, I, I overcame that already. You're on your way to a heavy fall because none, Christ ain't came back yet. We still here. We still got to endure. You ain't, you ain't nobody. You're, you're, you can't get, let your mind get in that zone where, oh, man, I, hey, I used to be a, a whoremonger, and it been, it been 10 years. I ain't did, I ain't, I ain't slept with, I ain't did, no, I'm good. And you stop meditating on the scriptures. You stop doing it so you think you stand, and then before, boom, whoop, you fail because you thought that you was good. You stopped meditating. You stopped applying the scriptures you thought you stood you thought you was good but no it shows you no let's let says let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall you're gonna fall if you're walking around puffed up you're gonna fall it's just a matter of time it might be two years it might be three four five ten fifteen you're gonna fall if you got a haughty spirit. You think you can't be touched. That's what puffed up mean. You puffed up and you think you think your your bubble can't be busted. Uh, Romans twelve and three. Romans twelve and three. chapter twelve verse three. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we all got to keep it in the forefront of our mind that the things that we have, we only have them because God gave it to us. We don't have, we don't have a, we don't even, we don't have a, a right to be puffed up. Like it's like it saying in Sirach 10. Uh, why is uh, dirt and dirt and earth and ashes proud? Like we 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 made from the dust, and when we die, we return to the dust. But yet we walk around puffed up, like we like to, we we here today and gone tomorrow. But we think we think we something, right? That's that's the wrong spirit. We cannot walk around with a puffed up spirit, with a puffed up mind. Where can't nobody tell us nothing? That's not that's not a spirit of charity. You don't you walking in that spirit? You do not. You are not walking in the truth. Point blank, point period. You're not walking in the truth. Back to you. You had something you wanted to say? Yeah. Um. I just had one one precept to uh go with what you was bringing out. Ecclesiastes chapter seven and verse sixteen. Just going back into that being puffed up, that super proud spirit where you act like can't nobody correct you, or you think you know so much, or you've been here for so long like you can't be touched. Even Solomon talked 
told us again, told us about that. Uh, read, read that Ecclesiastes seven and sixteen. The book remember, of Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes is a book of Solomon's repentance. So this is something he learned in his repentance. Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 16. Be not righteous over much, mm-hmm. neither make thyself over wise. You see that? Now, is it really possible to be over much? Right? Is God telling us to not be too righteous? No. He's saying don't think of yourself so highly where you think you can't be touched like you could do no wrong. You righteous over much. You holier than thou. Who art thou to tell me such and such? Who art thou to correct me? You know who I am? That's what he means by be not righteous over much or being over wise. Come on. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Why shouldest what? Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? A spirit like that, you're going to destroy yourself. That's why he says what you just quote in Proverbs, uh, pride goes goeth before destruction. That's what that's what this is saying right here. The same thing. It's a spirit of pride, pride, not charity, vaunting itself or pu- being puffed up. That's all. So go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13 to 5. Let's speed up a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly. So this is charity. Wait a minute. Okay, I wrote that wrong. All right. So read it again. Doth not behave itself unseemly. So charity does not behave itself unseemly. Get uh pull up the definition. It might not, that might not be in order, but you guys see y'all get it. Pull it up. So you could read the where the ad, the the adjective. Unseemly adjective one, not in accord with accepted standards of decency or morality. Two, not suited to the circumstances and appropriate. Three, unattractive, unsightly. Uh, read that. You can read that. Ever. Oh, let me see. Ever, in an improper or in, in, inappropriate manner. So ultimately, let me see. Ultimately, um, go to that where uh, go down a little bit where it say unseemliness. But that first definition it said not in accord with accepted standards of decency and morality. We understand that you do that un, that's going against the grain of the commandments, going against the grain of the scriptures. But under unseemliness, uh, we're not gonna read all of it. Uh, go down to it's the synonyms uh, improper. Go to improper. Read read improper and hell. Yeah, just read down. I thought I highlighted it. Read from improper. Yeah, read from improper. No, you know what? Just read from the top. These adjectives. Unseemliness, noun, synonyms, unseemly, improper, unbecoming, indelicate, indecent, indecorous. These adjectives mean not in keeping with accepted standards of what is right or proper. What is unseemly reflects badly on one's manners or morals. An unseemly outburst married in unseemly haste. Improper often refers to unethical conduct, a breach of etiquette or morally offensive behavior, improper business practices, improper behavior at the dinner table, uh, dinner table, unbecoming suggest that, I mean, suggest what is beneath the standard implied by one's character or position. Language unbecoming to an officer, indelicate suggest immodesty, coarseness, or tactful, or tactlessness, indelicate barnyard humor, an indelicate reference to the senator's family's troubles. Uh, indecent refers to what is considered crude or vulgar, especially with regard to sexual impropriety or sexually explicit material. An indecent proposal, indecent programming. Indecorous implies violation of propi- propri- yeah, propriety or decorum. An expose of the author's indecor- indecorous past. So if you, if you unseemly 
all of these, you, you, your, your, your behavior, you're doing something that's outside of, um, outside of moral conduct. We know our moral com- conduct is the commandments. Go to Ephesians chapter five and verse one. But it, it's, it's a, it's, you say unseemly, it's a wide range of things, but we're going to highlight a few, just a few. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, uh-huh. and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So this is Paul admonishing us to, to follow after him and the keeping of the commandments, doing those things that are right, doing, doing those things that we're supposed to be, doing those things that's becoming of our repentance. Read. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. So it says fornication and uncleanness, don't let it be once named amongst you. These are fornication, uncleanness, or covetousness. This is all in reference. This is is a reason why they group together. These are all sexual sins. Fornication is having sex outside of marriage. Uncleanness is the vile affection. It goes into another script to say inordinate affection. That's your pedophilia, things of that nature. And covetousness is coupled right along with it. You covet after something that ain't yours. You desire something that you're not supposed to have. Uh, read on. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. And all of these, the, all of these are the words that come out of your mouth. That filthy, the filthiness Go jump back to 4 and 29. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So that's that, that filthiness and that foolish talking. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Filthiness. You got filthy, filthy, filthy communication. You, you're talking about things that don't need to be talked about. You, you talk about things... Sexual, sexual things, or what? What's some other? Um, you're talking about things that need not to be uttered openly. You don't have no discretion in your word choice. Foolish talking, the corrupt communication, um, and then it says jesting. Jesting is like uh, um, you're joking. You're joking to the point of you, you. It's offensive joking, for lack of better, for, to just say it plainly. It's offensive joking. You don't know how you you take joking too far to where now you cause an offense and you cause an offense so grand that a brother may may jump out the spirit and want to fight you. That's jesting. And it's all coupled together. You you go you go too far. You don't have no um you got no filter. You don't have no no discretion and learn. Those are all unseemly things. Uh read on. Ephesians chapter five, verse four. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. It says these are not convenient. There's not convenient or unbecoming of saints. Unbecoming of somebody that say they're the Israelite and they keep the commandments. These are things that we not ought not to do. And there's a whole, there's a, whole other, a line of other things that we can go through to define unseemly. But just for the lack of for time, we're going to stick with these. These are some of the things that un, being unseemly, you're not going to do these. The being, no. These are the traits of being unseemly. You being in this truth and in repentance, you're going to do the opposite. Read on. For did she know that no, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? So this lets you know. That every the, the the traits that we read above, these are the things. This is the judge. You're a whoremonger. You're unclean, or the, the unclean is talking about value, the vile behavior, or covetous. Who is in that? It's all idolatry. Because you putting you putting, if your des, whatever your desire, your desire, you're a whoremonger. You putting that before the Most High God. That's idolatry. Because you a lift. You a lift. Um, how could I say it nicely? You would you would lift uh, getting your rock. You'll put getting your rocks off before the commandments of God. That's idolatry. 
that you would do anything and everything to get your rocks off. But when it comes to commandments, you're like, uh, maybe later. That's idolatry. Uh, it says that uh, who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. You do these things, you're, you're not walking in the truth. You're not walking in the commandments. You're not walking in charity or you're not walking in love. Love is an action word. And that action, the action that you're supposed to be exhibiting is keeping the commandments of God. Go back to 1 Corinthians 13. 13 and verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeking not her own. So charity is not selfish. You're not, you're, you're, you're not thinking about just you. Get 1 Corinthians 10 and 24. So seeketh not our own is talking about us being selfish. If you got a selfish spirit, you know it's all about me, 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 me. You ain't walking in the spirit of charity. First For, Corinthians 10 and 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. That's it. That's it. Uh -oh. it. Said, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Meaning, as we move in this truth, as we grow, we got to think about the welfare and the well-being of the whole nation, not just ourselves. Yeah, the start. The starting point is us getting our own affairs together. But the purpose of us getting our own affairs together and our own spirits right is so that we can help the nation. Give me First Corinthians. I mean, not First Corinthians. Romans chapter fifteen and verse one. Romans chapter fifteen and verse one. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. If you've been in the truth longer, if you, you built your spirit up, you built up a discipline, you built up that discipline so that you can help those that come in after you. You built up that discipline to be able to help those that are weak, those that may be weak in faith. It's, it's your responsibility because you built up the discipline. Not that you arrived and you got somewhere, you still got battles, but you understand, hey, I built up the discipline to be able to endure a little bit better, endure a little longer, I grew wiser. So you know what? It's my job to help those that come in this week. They don't, they don't have that discipline yet. Read. Verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So as we get it right, our job is to get our brother and sister right. And then it, that, that, that just duplicates. That's what charity does. We're not in it. We're not just, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't, hey, I used to be a whoremonger, and I ain't no whoremonger no more. I'm good. And you stop right there. You know, you do nothing. Your mindset is, hey, I'm going to read all these books. I'm going to read the Bible 20 times over, but I'm not going to do nothing to help build up the body. I'm not going to do nothing to help build up the nation. I'm going to stay to myself. Hey, I got my stuff. I, hey, I got my stuff together. Hey, hey. It's up to you. You got It's up to you to get yourself together. No, you, you getting yourself right. Not saying that you got to hold. You gonna hold, you gonna be able to force somebody to get themselves right. But you have to be. As you get yourself right, now it's your job. For those that come in after you, it might be somebody that come in after you that got the same uh, setbacks that you have. The purpose of you coming in first is so that you can help them. As you overcame, now somebody going to come in and got the same issues you got. Your job is to help them build, help them get better. But if your mindset is, hey, I'm just going to study. I read the Bible 25 times. I, I, I got a bookshelf of 100 books, and I read all of them. They all highlighted up. But yet you're not doing nothing to pour that in, all that, that knowledge that you, uh, what's the, that you, uh, that all that knowledge that you stored up, you're not using it to help nobody. That's not wisdom. That's just puff. That's just knowledge. Unapplied knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom, you get wisdom when you apply. And the, the thing that you, 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 you have a spirit to read, you got a spirit to do those things, you're supposed to be doing it so that you can build up your, your, the, the nation. You're supposed to be doing it so that you can help build the nation. Not just for yourself so you can say, hey, I read this, I read that, I got this, I got that. No, that's the wrong spirit. Read. Verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. We supposed to be walking after the example that Christ set for us. He didn't come to please himself. He came to be a servant. And that's the thought process we got to be in. We get ourselves right. And as we get ourselves right, we get our people right. Go to uh, Sirach 24 and 34. Sirach chapter 24 and verse 34. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 24 and verse 34. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only. We, gotta, but, we all have to understand that as we labor to get our minds right, we labor to do these things, we are not doing it for ourselves. We are not doing it for ourselves because that's the example that Christ set for us. We are doing everything that we're doing. If you, if you go back to Joseph, he didn't go through getting sold by his brothers into slavery. He didn't go through it for himself. He went through it so that the most high caused him to go through it so that he could be in a position to be able to bring his father's, father and his brothers in and they could be good. That's, how, that's what our thought process got to be. Whether you got to trade, whatever amenities you have in this captivity, you got to understand that you have them. You might come in the truth and you might have certain talents and gifts and all of that stuff. You have to understand in your mind that, hey, you know what? The Most High allowed me to uh, 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 obtain all of these things throughout my life for this day. I came in the truth, and now I got these things so that I can help build up the nation. I can help rebuild my nation. That's what your thought process got to be. Um, but I, where you at? Uh, Sirach 2434. Read that. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. So we got to all have that mindset. The labor that we put forth in this truth is not for us. It's for the nation. It's for our brothers and sisters that's coming in and seeking after wisdom, seeking how they have to make decisions, seeking how to live their life. From there, go back to um, 1 Corinthians 13 and 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, We're verse... Almost done. Go ahead. Verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, it's not easily provoked, meaning you're not easily offended. You don't take everything personal. You're not emotional. Every time somebody do something, you, you're not, man, I can't believe he did that. Hey, man, I can't believe that. It's like little children. You got children, that's what children do. That's what, that's what children do. You got sons, you got daughters. Every little thing that somebody do, he did this. He hit me here. Hey, he, we was playing, and he bumped me, and I fell on the floor. And, it's, and if they don't, if, if, if the person don't get the punishment that they think it's an issue, that's you being easily provoked. You want somebody to get some judgment because you, you both was doing, you both was doing evil, but yet you, you, you try to flip it on the other person. And adults, adults act like that. Uh, pull up the definition. Uh, um, you could just read, you got to read all of them. Um, read the first two. Provoke, verb, to call into action, to arouse, to excite, as to provoke anger or wrath by offensive words or by injury, to provoke war. Two, to make angry, to offend, to incense, to enrage. So... When, when, when the scriptures say not easily provoked, meaning that it, it actually, it, all of these tie together, is if you're not easily provoked, that you got a long-suffering spirit. That means, because you, you, you just examine it, just think about what happened, what happened to Christ. The example that he set, well, I think in, in Peter it said he reviled, but reviled not again. And he was in a position where that, that, that was beyond provoking. But he didn't. He, he when when they uh, when he was betrayed in the garden, Peter cut off the servant ear, and he told him, "No, nah, don't do that." And he healed the servant. That's not easily. Even though he was being provoked to the point of death, and to death, he didn't he didn't respond off of that. When you easily provoked every little thing, you got you get the, you get to thinking evil. You, you somebody do something. I can't believe it. He just walked past me and didn't say shalom. Okay, how you know that they wasn't, how you know they ain't been holding they, how you know they wasn't rushing to the bathroom and they like, man, I'm going to come back and, and, and give do my salutes or whatever. How you know they ain't had something going on where it was urgent, where they didn't want to get caught in a in a chain of uh, 20 hugs and shalom because they had something to do. But in their mind, they like, you know what, let me go take care of this business first and I'm going to go back and, and salute the brothers and sisters. 
that's easily provoked. You just sense it, oh, hypersensitive. Everything that happens, you just get out, you just get in your emotions and get in the frenzy. Um, read the, the James chapter 1 and verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 19. James chapter 1 and verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So the scripture says, let every man be swift to hear. Meaning, if you're not easily provoked, that means your mind, like they say, we got you got two ears and one mouth. When things happen, your mind is 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 first your first reaction should be to think to think about it think think it through think to um what am i trying to say it's like kind think twice yeah reason and, and your reasoning shouldn't be like somebody do something your first thought that come to your mind shouldn't be that they doing it maliciously that they doing it to unless it unless there's a pattern a pattern of this behavior your first thought shouldn't be, look at this evil Negro. Your first thought should be, they probably didn't. They did this, you wink at ignorance. Your, your thought process should be, you know what, they probably didn't intend to do that. Now, if it's a pattern, then that's different. But you still shouldn't be easily provoked. Because when you provoke, that means you're trying to, you're, going, you're provoked to be able to retaliate. That's what it's saying. You're not easily provoked. Um, that's why it says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Read. Verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. When you act out of your emotions, you're not, you nine to ten times out of ten, you're going to be out the spirit because you reacted out of your emotion. You reacted about how you feel. You didn't react according to the scriptures. You reacted how you feel. That's anger. That's you being provoked. You're aroused to anger. You let somebody, like they say, it's a saying that says um, you don't stoop to somebody. You don't stoop down to somebody's level. You bring them up to your level. If you That's temperance. You got to be able to have a temperate spirit where things may happen, and somebody might be malicious, being doing something malicious towards you. But if you got a spirit of charity, you're going to maintain composure, and you're not going to react to them how they reacted to you or how they treating you. That's what script in uh, Proverbs 26, it says, answer a fool according to his folly. Uh, let's get that. Sorry, Proverbs 26 and 24. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 24. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips. No, and, that ain't it. Uh, 29. Uh, I got you. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. So that's what it's saying. It says, answer not a fool according to his folly. Some, that's what they, 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 they're saying. A lot of these sayings that the world ascribed, they got it from the scriptures. But it said, that it said, uh, don't stoop down to somebody level. That's what this is saying. Answer not a fool according to his folly lest thou also be like unto him. Somebody come and provoke you, whether it's malicious or not. They come and provoke you, and then you respond, you revenge. You ain't no better than them. Because you, you, gave them, you pretty much gave them what they wanted. They came for a fight, they pushed your button, and now y'all tussling and fighting. Y'all arguing. Y'all bickering, going back and forth. You gave them what they wanted. You answered that fool according to their folly. Read. Verse 5, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So now it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his conceit. So a fool coming to you, you don't get provoked, but you still address them. You still address they sin. You still address whatever it is that's wrong to let them know, no, you're wrong. And that's what it says, lest they be wise in their own conceit, unless they think, lest they think that what they're doing is right. You still let them know, but you don't respond to that. They come to you all loud and belligerent, and now you loud and belligerent, and now y'all arguing. No, that's not, that's not how you're supposed to move. They come to you loud and belligerent, you deal with them with tact and with wisdom so that it doesn't incite you just adding fuel to the fire. That's what, that's what, that's, that's what, is, what the scripture is saying when it's saying 
do not easily provoke. Uh, go to Romans 12 and 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Uh, verse 17. Recompense to man evil. I mean, recompense Read. to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So it says recompense to no man evil for evil. That would be that's somebody that's easily provoked. Y'all argue, arguing back and forth with somebody because you allow them to provoke you. You allow them to provoke you to anger. That's not how a spirit of charity moves. Get to Rock chapter 28 and verse 7. It's Rock chapter 28 and verse 7. Rock chapter 28 and verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. Wink at ignorance. Your first thought should be, he ain't mean that. I know he did this, but he, he ain't mean that. Then when it comes, it's a pattern. Then it's okay. He, he, he hit something off because he keep doing the same thing. But you wink at ignorance. You know, every time somebody do something, it ain't a call for him. Mean, I Matthew 18. And so every time it ain't because some, sometimes a brother just sleep, a slip, a brother just slip in their speech or slip in their actions. But if it's not a pattern behavior, you got to learn how to, what they say, uh, let things roll, roll off you like the water off a duck's back. You can't let everything, every little thing bother you. Because then that that would you 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 would be petty. That's that's called being petty. Every little thing that happened, you got, hey man, I gotta apply Matthew 18. Hey man, you walked past me and didn't say shalom. Huh? When? I mean, you walked past me and didn't say shalom. Hey man, my my bad. Then, then the next week, hey, man, you walked past me again and didn't say shalom. And this time you looked the other way. What? That's you being, and that's a light, it's a, it's a, it's a light example, but that's being easily provoked. You take everything personal. You think everybody's doing something against you or maliciously against you. That's never, that's uh, most of the time that's not the case. But we got it a lot of times we let, we get in our mind and we let those things go. It says, wink at ignorance. Read. Verse, Verse eight. 8. Abstain from strife, and thou shalt diminish thy sins. Uh -huh. For a furious man will kindle strife. I mean, you always starting some sh Read. A sinful man disquieteth, disquieteth friends. And not only are you starting ish, you, you murmuring, you talking about this, you talking about that, and you staining this brother's name or this sister's name to somebody else. And if they ain't in the spirit, they're going to follow right along, and now you causing, you causing strife and division in the body. Read. And make a debate among them that be at peace. You making a debate among them that be at peace. Brothers and sisters are at peace, keeping the commandments, coming to the Sabbath, coming to the new moon, breaking bread with each other, then you come and cause strife, and now... A brother, a brother and sister that was at peace with each other, now they at odds and don't even know why they at odds with each other because you done stole souls some discord. That's, that's exactly what I was about to say. That's some right. discord. So that's somebody that's easily provoked. You provoke and then you start doing things that's ill towards your brothers and sisters. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Was that the last scripture on that? Matter if I add one script go also ahead. before you go too far because you, you read James 1 and 19. Um... Read James 1.19, and then I'm going to go to Sirach chapter 5, verse 11. Because you read something in James 1.19 where it talked about being slow to hear. I mean, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Read that, read that one more time. James chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Because a lot of times, like you just brought out that, Sometimes people don't mean things, right? Sometimes they do things, like you say in, uh, I believe it's Sirach ch chapter 13, where it says, admonish thy friend, it may be he hath not done it, and if he have, that he do it no more. Admonish thy friend, he, it may be that he hath not said it, right? So it says to be, read that one more time. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath. You know what this is being, what this is actually called? Go to Sirach chapter 5, verse 11. 
So yes, it's, it is charity. This is the spirit of charity, but it's another word that I like that Sarak uses. Ecle uh, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Be swift to hear. Uh-huh. And let thy life be sincere. Let thy what? Let thy life be sincere. So if you have charity, you are sincere. You're sincere the way you deal with brothers and with sisters. Just because you might hear something or something may happen to you, you're very patient about it. You're not quick to think evil. You're not quick to think, oh, he got something against me or why is he doing that? You don't let a pattern to be shown or maybe this brother just made a mistake. You weren't quick to wink at ignorance your life was not sincere so you were impulsive or emotional in the way you reacted and you were, were you were quick to avenge yourself versus living a sincere life and moving in charity and being quick to hear and slow to speak read on and with patience give answers you see that that's how you that's being slow to speak because you're trying to understand the full matter or you're trying to examine the full matter before you were brute. Allow patience. Or maybe he didn't mean that. You're being slow to speak, right? But you're being patient and sincere in your life, meaning with how you're dealing with others. So a charitable spirit is a sincere spirit. All right. Yeah, and, uh, go to First Corinthians thirteen. First Corinthians five. chapter thirteen, verse five. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So the last part, because you got a couple of scriptures that says, thinketh no evil. Meaning that when things happen, your first thought is to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. That's what that's how charity moves. And you see all these things go hand in hand and they work together. Because to do all of this stuff, you gotta have, you gotta be long suffering, you gotta be kind can't have envy you can't be puffed up because if you puffed up you're not going you're going they'll you're going to think if you puffed up you're going to think evil if you vaunted yourself you're going to think evil if you puffed up you're going to be you're going to seek your own you're going to behave unseemly all of these things work hand in hand these are attributes of a person that has charity it's up to it's, it's up to each one of us individually to read through these things and examine ourselves and say, hey, you know what? I'm, I, don't, I don't puff my, I ain't, I ain't puffed up. I'm not vaunt, I don't vaunt myself, but you know what? I, I am kind of selfish. You know what? I got to work on being kind because selfish go hand in hand with being kind. You have to be able to look at these things and fix them. As it comes to your, as it comes to your attention, you got to be able to fix it. Get a rock chapter 11, verse 7. It says, charity thinketh no evil. Charity thinketh no evil. Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, and verse 7. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. If you hear something and you only heard one side and you are already pointing blame and shifting blame, you're thinking evil. Because you, have, you don't know the full story. You don't know everything that happened. Read understand first and then rebuke you got to understand a full compilation of the story before you can actually correct or rebuke read answer not before thou hast heard the cause don't give an answer until you heard everything because otherwise you that you 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 can be more rolling in the thinking uh, you can be rolling in the spirit of thinking evil read neither interrupt a men in the midst of their talk uh-huh. Now we go to Titus chapter 1, verse 15. It's the last, last scripture. Because if you think, when, you, when you're rolling in the spirit where you think no evil, this is the mindset that you're going to have. Titus chapter 1 and 15. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is no thing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. So you got to think about that. It says, unto the pure, all things are pure. If you are pure and you're, you're keeping the commandments, you came in these doors, you're getting yourself right. And your brother come through the doors and he getting himself right. If he do something, your thought process either A, hey, you know what? He probably ain't mean that. We all sick. We do things that we don't even realize we're doing. He ain't mean. His brother ain't mean that. Unto the pure, all things are pure. 
you, you, your thought process, unless you see a pattern of behavior, you know what? He might, and even if it's a pattern, you, your thought process is still, you know what? He might not realize that he's doing this and it's, a, and it's causing offenses. Let me go talk to him so that he can, so he can realize that what he's doing is offensive and that he can change it, that he can fix it. But if your thought prep, you, man, look, he's evil. He's doing this, he's doing that. Your, that means that your mind and your conscience is defiled. Because nothing is, anything that a brother or sister do, you're thinking evil. Your, your thought automatically goes way left field about what this, what this person's motives is and all that. And you ain't even talk to him. You don't even know, you don't even know the full scope of what happened or what's going on. You didn't ask questions and inquire. You just ran with it. That means your heart and your conscience is defiled because you didn't apply charity. You didn't apply the commandments. You didn't apply love, which is the commandments. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time. Oh, yeah.